Hello and welcome to Mecha Encyclopedia, a series that covers the Mech Encyclopedia section from the Super Robot Wars games. In this video, we'll be going over the allied mobile suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans DLC units featured in Super Robot Wars 30. As always, the unit information provided will be solely from the descriptions given in-game. Before we get started, if you're new here, welcome, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. The first unit we'll take a look at is the Gundam Barbatos Lupus Rex. Main pilot, Mikazuki August. Subpilots, none. Size, medium. Height, 19 meters. Weight, 32.1 tons. The Barbatos Lupus Rex is the final version of Gundam Barbatos, a Gundam frame mobile suit developed around 300 years ago during the Calamity War. Barbatos was initially upgraded into Barbatos Lupus, which went on to sustain heavy damage in the battle against a giant mobile armor. This led to Tewa's engineers giving it a major overhaul into Barbatos Lupus Rex. It was given the name Rex, meaning King, in recognition of the fact that the mech's reaction speed had been raised to its theoretical limit, using Mikazuki's combat data. It was built around the concept of anti-warship combat, utilizing an extra-large mace, with a haft capable of being extended or compacted as its main weapon. It has another new weapon as well, a tail blade made from a super hard wire blade which was affixed to the mobile armor that wrecked the Lupus. Main attacks include 200mm cannon, melee, tail blade, extra-large mace, charge. The Barbatos Lupus Rex comes equipped with nanolaminate armor, reducing ranged beam attack damage by 3,000 and all other damage by 1,000. The Elia Shiki system, giving Mikazuki plus 20 to all stats. And limiter off, granting plus 2 movement, plus 50 sight, plus 50 mobility, and plus 30% damage for 2 turns at 150 plus morale. After 2 turns, however, the effect ends and the pilot's morale drops to 50. The Barbatos Lupus Rex's custom upgrade bonuses, plus 200 attack damage to all weapons, and plus 1 to movement. Next up is the Gundam Gusian Rebake Full City. Main pilot, Akihiro Altland. Subpilots, none. Size, medium. Height, 18.2 meters. Weight, 36.5 tons. The Gusian Rebake Full City is a mobile suit built over the Gundam Gusian, a Gundam frame mobile suit developed during the Calamity War. The Gusian was first captured from the Brewers, a band of space pirates, and fitted with an Elias Shiki system from a man Rodi unit also taken from the Brewers, as it was built into Gusian Rebake. It was then overhauled again to its final configuration. Its design is specialized for close range combat in order to suit Akihiro's preferences. It retains the Goose and Rebake's precision long range fire and quadruple bombardment capabilities. Its close range destructive power is improved by the rear armor that can transform into giant scissors. Overall, it is an extremely flexible weapon. Attacks include 110mm rifle, halberd, rifle barrage, scissors. The Gushin Rebake FC comes equipped with nano laminate armor, reducing ranged beam attack damage by 3000 and all other damage by 1000, and the Elia Shiki system, increasing all of Akihiro stats by 10. The Gushin Rebake Full City's custom upgrade bonuses, plus 300 attack and minus 10 energy to the scissors attack. The next unit is the Gundam Florus. Main pilot, Norbashino. Subpilots, none. Size, medium. Height, 17.8 meters. Weight, 29.9 tons. The Gundam Florus is a Gundam frame mobile suit excavated from a half metal mine on Mars. It was overhauled within the facilities of the Tewaz Corporation, which also fitted an Elia Shiki system equipped cockpit into it. By transforming into the quadrupedal artillery mode, it becomes a highly competent, well-braced artillery platform. At the insistence of its pilot Shino, it was painted in bright magenta and decorated with details, becoming his very own Ryusei Go-4. Attacks include Flores Machine Gun, Long Barrel Cannon, Galaxy Cannon. The Gundam Flores comes equipped with nano-laminate armor, reducing ranged beam attack damage by 3000 and all other damage by 1000. 
and the Eliashiki system, increasing all of Shino's stats by 5. Gundam Flores' custom upgrade bonuses, plus 300 damage and plus 2 range to Galaxy Cannon. The last unit we'll be taking a look at is the Gundam Bale. Main pilot, Megillus Farid. Subpilots, none. Size, medium. Height, 18 meters. Weight, 30 tons. The Gundam Bale is the first unit of the 72 Gundam frames. This was the unit piloted by Agnika Kairu, hero of the Calamity War and founder of Galahorn. It has been kept safe in the Galahorn Earth Headquarters underground altar. Its main weapons are its two Bale swords. Legend claims Agnika's soul resides within it, and that whoever pilots it successfully is fit to rule over Galahorn. McGillis seizes it and claims it as his own as part of his effort to take over Galahorn. Attacks include electromagnetic gun, Bale sword, Bale sword combo. The Gundam Bale comes equipped with nano laminate armor, reducing ranged beam attack damage by 3000 and all other damage by 1000, and the Eliashiki system, increasing all of McGillis' stats by 20. The Gundam Bale's custom upgrade bonus is plus 300 attack damage to all weapons and plus 1 to movement. And that's it for the Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans units featured in Super Robot Wars 30. These units were part of the DLC 2 pack for the game. Pretty solid units all around. The nano laminate armor makes them pretty much invincible when dealing with units relying on beam weaponry, like Gira Doga's. I find it funny that they recreated Mikazuki's fight against the mobile armor as the last stage for their DLC, though it's unmanned. A nice nod to the anime, with dialogue that's very similar to that battle. They also have interesting interactions with the other characters in 30, as they're very reluctant to trust anybody given the terrible things they've been through in their own anime. They open up to everyone by the end of their DLC though, which is very nice for them. Let me know what you guys think about the IBO units, either from the anime or in-game. I'd love to hear it. And that'll be it for this video. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. If you could, a subscription and like would be greatly appreciated, as I'd like the series to grow. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.